We okay. ready? Um, Here we go. Should we just go? Yeah, let's just pound this. Let's go. Pound it. Pound. Wait, wait let's do it for just a second. Okay. Make people wait. Wait, do you have gum? Hang on, let me spit out. No, I don't have gum. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry for the gum. I will never do it again. The 947 messages I got, I get it. Okay, I'm sorry. I told people, I said, if you bring gum one more time, you're done. There's no gum in the studio. You're There's done, Jimmy. Rule. I'm sorry. You're okay? done. Everybody look at me. From the bottom of my humble heart, I apologize. Okay? If I had fake teeth, like someone we know, I probably couldn't chew gum. Uncalled okay. for. Okay, here we go. Let's go. Emergency right. pod. Emergency pod. Here we Big go. Big deal. Merger. Did you call this? Yeah, of course I called it. Are you? Is anybody shocked that I called but this? But I think you called this for later in the year. I called that it was coming. Okay. Yeah. I called my shot. I knew it was coming. Okay, so as you probably are aware, the PPA has announced and the MLP has announced that they yes. have merged. Um, and so we're going to go through what we know uh, yeah. with merger. And Jimmy, a lot of people think that I plug him all the information, and I do plug him a little bit, but he is more well-connected than probably 95% of players. He knows MLP owners. He knows PPA staff. He knows MLP staff. He knows uh, anonymous people online. He knows Odoth. He knows all those people. <laughs> he's, a, he's in the Discord, and so he has all the information. Um, so what are you hearing, Jimmy? So I think let's start. Let's let's see if we can start just with the official statement. Okay. Okay. So the official statement, and we don't have to read it word for word, but essentially the two organizations have combined. Okay. This, this is not a – this isn't like – PPA, MLP are working separate and they each have ownership in each other. This is a 100, like 50% each merger. So PPA now owns 50% of MLP. MLP owns 50% of PPA. So when one does well, the other one does well. Yeah, and vice they're the versa. same. They're all, they're all a single entity now. Yeah. The, the way that this is, has changed from previous, for those that want to know, is that previously MLP had no ownership in PPA. Correct. And PPA, the deal that they were trying to work out, would have had 18.5% ownership in MLP. Okay. Now they're one single entity. A little small correction. So my understanding is they're going to form a new company. Yes. And I don't know what the name of that is. Uh, rumors are Pickle Nation, Pickleball Nation, something like that. And that company will own PPA and MLP. So PPA will still be standalone. They'll still run their tournaments and MLP will still stand alone and they'll cool. run their team events, but they'll still be, they'll have ownership in each. Is that correct? Okay, so yes, that is true, um, but it's going to be under one holding company. They're going to share a bank account. Okay, and yeah, I think that they're going to come up with some sort of some sort of name, some sort of, um, like essentially they're going to run them. They're going to run them the same. Yep. And PPA already has staff and infrastructure in place, so my understanding is that PPA is going to keep all of that in place. Yep. Connor Pardo is still going to have a role. Mm -hmm. We don't know exactly what that role will be, but he is still going to have a role in it. I mean, he does still, you know, obviously have a good job of running tournaments. Yep. Right. So he is going to have that role. Um, there's $50 million investment. Yes. Yep. And so the big players with that money is Al Tylus. Yep. And, and then J Jason, Jason Stein, Stein. Who are MLP owners. Yep. So they have invested $50 million. That's obviously going to help cover salaries, all these salaries that people have been getting. That's going to help cover all, all sorts of things. So Tylus and Stein put in $50 million. Dundon. They are saving pickleball. They are saving pickleball. They are saving pickleball. Dundon obviously is still involved. Yeah. And now there's five board seats for this new entity. Three of the five board seats... So Tylus gets one, mm -hmm. Stein gets one, Dundon gets one, Steve Kuhn gets one, and then former MLP CEO Brian Levine gets one. So those are the five board seats. Okay. So this is where it gets a little bit interesting because if you just look at it from a pure MLP PPA standpoint, mm -hmm. MLP has three of the five boards, three and a half almost mm -hmm. of the five board seats. Levine, so they're going to break off again one more time? Well, I don't know if they're going to break off again, but does that? But it's possible that that gives MLP control. Yeah, I don't, I don't I think mean, that'll happen. No, I'm just saying, I don't think they're not going to break off. I'm just saying it gives them, it gives them a little bit of control. Yeah. So what happens to Steve Kuhn? Tell us. So Steve Kuhn, he still has a board seat. Um, 
My understanding is that board seat's probably going to be end up being a proxy seat, so somebody will actually... Yeah, so I heard it's silent. Yeah, it'll yep. be silent. Somebody will actually sit on the board and make the votes for him. Mm-hmm. Um, but he will have a board seat in name, face, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And then Steve's focus, he gets to keep his two babies. Steve mm-hmm. has two babies. Duper. Duper, which is his big baby. Mm-hmm. He, which Steve is very convinced that Duper is a billion dollar business. Yep. And that that's the, that's the biggest thing. And then he gets to keep minor league pickleball, which Steve absolutely loves. So the biggest thing for Steve is that he can now go focus on the 50 million amateur pickleball players out there instead of the 50 or a hundred pro pickleball players. Yeah. And he's going to have a greater impact on the sport long-term. You know, he's got this belief that pickleball is going to save America. Like it's a huge He did deal. just open up pickle mall. Pickle mall. Yeah. So he has this belief that there's going to be a hundred million players by 2023, all these things. So Steve gets to focus on that as opposed to on the, the pro side of things. So that's where Steve, Steve Kuhn is going to go. Okay. Um, Tom Dundon. I believe he still retains pickleball central. Mm -hmm. He still retains pickleball brackets. I do think that there is an opportunity for, for them to become part of this entity at some point. Um, But that's kind of where Dundon's focus is going to be. Not that Dundon is like super hands-on and EPA or MLP anyways. He kind of lets, you know, Connor do his thing. Yeah. Where it goes for players. This is where I think it gets sticky. Mm -hmm. And this is where I think we're going to have a little bit of backlash. Okay. During the tour wars, the tour wars as we're calling it. So just a a long time ago, as in one week ago. As in one week ago, during the tour wars, we saw that both sides started writing cash, writing checks and offering insane numbers to players. Mm -hmm. One of those, I mean, those, I mean, we're like, let's just call it what it is. You know, we joke about Tyler's 5 million, but there, but it's several hundred thousand dollars for players. And there is players that have reached seven figures. Yeah. Multiple, multiple. And a lot of MLP players, MLP ended up with about 80 or so percent of the top what we'll just call them premier level players because those are probably the top 96 with well 48, but premier and challenger top 96 in pickleball and MLP had about 80%. PPA was offering insane money to some, like to to, some people, to some people. And a lot of these players were turning it down, Mm -hmm. essentially saying, we're not going, we don't think it's real money. Mm -hmm. MLP was kind of saying, you know, do you think that they're really going to be able to pay that? Yeah all of these things. And so these players were loyal and stuck with MLP for less money. A couple players ended up flipping low Mm -hmm. and they took on both sides, on both sides, but a couple players ended up taking these large sums of money on both sides. Mm -hmm. Our understanding is that every contract is going to be honored. Yes. And one thing I will add to my understanding from what I've heard many, I don't know about all, but many of the PPA players have already received their signing bonus. They've received some capital from PPA. Yeah. And However, MLP, we do know that. With MLP, there's only been one group of players that have received that. Like yes. Four or five players. Yes. And, and I see that, but I also see it in the sense that like it's 2024 contracts. So paying it four months early is not like a huge red flag. Yeah. But they did also send a very large sum of money to that group of players. Yeah. Like a massive sum of money. Yeah. So anyways, with that being said, if you're an MLP player, okay, okay, put on your MLP hat, and you signed for two hundred thousand, okay, a year, and you were loyal to MLP, and you were like, I'm not going PPA, and PPA called and they offered you three fifty, four fifty, five hundred, yeah, and you're like, nope, I'm going to MLP. I don't think PPA is actually going to have the money, and now this merger happens. Yeah, are you pissed? I think there's two ways you can look at it uh, because we know people that are in that exact situation. Yeah. And number one, you can definitely be pissed because there's other players who are not nearly as good as you are or nearly have the exposure or anything like that. And yeah. they're getting more money than you. So number one, you could definitely be frustrated with that. Number two is you can take a step back and say, hey, I accepted the deal because it was a good deal. You're still making one to two to 300,000 plus yeah. playing pickleball, yeah. which they love, assumingly. Um, and so it depends on which uh, way you look at it. But I mean, definitely 
I think for most players, they'd be a little bit annoyed. Um, but I would imagine there will still be opportunities for the players that are good and that will win and that, a, that do a good job at showcasing themselves, being positive. I still think there's probably going to be a pretty good chance for them to make more money next year. Yeah, I mean, I think that everybody wins – I think all of the players win. Yeah. Okay. Because they all got raises. Let's just call it what it is. They all got guaranteed money. They all got health insurance. They got um, 401k. They got their travel is actually included in this pay now. To me, that's one of the. What's your, what would like, that's huge. Give us an idea. What was your travel expense last year? So I was, there's a lot of players who do it super cheap. I normally almost always would stay at hotels. Yeah. Um, I always fly Delta just because their hub is in Salt Lake. So they have direct flights. But I would spend, I would say, minimum. $1,500 Fifteen hundred dollars uh, to to get to and from a tournament. So if you play thirty tournaments a year, you're spending sixty grand around there, plus yeah. or more. Yeah, plus food, plus, plus food, yeah, everything else. Yeah. yeah, so that is included. Yeah, in these new deals. Yeah, for that's all the huge. for all the players. I yeah. think. yeah. So that's that's a massive, massive, massive gift for the yeah. players. Um, so I I understand. I think that that there's going to be players that are upset because there's players that did turn down pretty freaking big yep. deals yep. and showed their loyalty. And, and the reality is, is now that with this merger, there's no reason these, these there's no reason for the PPA MLP, whatever they're going to call it to offer more money, to <laughs> offer more money. Cause they're not going to negotiate against themselves. Yep. Right. There's no competing league now, so they don't have to go back and offer more money. Yep. The second thing is, is the reason that they did this. One of the reasons is to provide stability. Number two, both sides were going to burn money. Mm-hmm. 2024, both sides were just going to absolutely burn through money. And so this is a way to cut costs, not not add to costs. And so, so, somebody told me, I'm not going to say which side, but they gave the person signing these players a budget of around $12 million. Yeah. And do you know what that person signed these players for, the total amount? I heard it was like $20, 20 million or 20 so. Million, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You go over $8 I mean, million. look, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's close. It's close. right. It's like when you give your wife a budget, it's yeah. close. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, it, I mean, this is going to be interesting. So let's, let's talk about what, what happens moving. Yeah. Back. So we have kind of a Q and a, um, from, I believe the MLP PPA, um, side. And so we're just going to kind of run through the questions yeah. and kind of, uh, answer what they, they said. So, yeah. um, it says, why did the two competing tours decide to finally merge? Why will this time be different? Jimmy, what's the answer that they Yeah, give? so I think the, the the big reason that why they decided to merge is that this is what's best for pickleball. Mm-hmm. This is what's best to have all the players, all the top players in pickleball under one roof. Yeah. Right? So now we're not, you know, wondering, you know, we talked about this on our pod for, for the last week and a half, two weeks. Like, it's great that you guys have all this depth, but now you're never going to play Ben Johns. And it's great that you have Ben Johns and Natalie Waters, but... <laughs> you're literally getting qualifiers in the quarterfinals, yep. like that level of competition. Yep. And so now it's back. It's all under one roof. It's not fractured. Mom and dad are back together. Yeah. Who's, who's mom and who's dad? <laughs> Good question. Okay. Um, and at the end, they say, why we are confident this time will be different is because for the first time in our complicated histories with each other, it is truly a merger of equals, getting fully under the covers together rather than a mere agreement to run our competing events in a certain fashion. Yes, and that's so what we were saying. truly 50-50. 50, 50, 50. Yeah. Yep, each side is together. They own 50-50. What will the new league be called? So this is what we talked about where they're essentially going to run the tour events for now as PPA. Mm-hmm. Right. So any tour events. So what we mean by tour events are obviously when you pick your partner Mm -hmm. and you go, you know, singles, mixed doubles and gender doubles, that'll be run as the PPA tour. Any team events will still be ran as major league pickleball. Now there's two, there's two reasons for this. So I was actually explaining this because I felt like for confusion sakes, for all sorts of things that why don't you just combine and have one name? Mm -hmm. The reason that they're doing this is because if they run PPA tour events separately. So for example, you run, P- you run your PPA events and then you run your major league pickleball. Yep. You can have Selkirk come and sponsor the PPA tour. Mm-hmm. And then you can have pro XR come and sponsor yeah, major league pickleball more sponsorship opportunities. And it's not a conflict of interest, yeah. right? You can have chase bank sponsor PPA and Wells Fargo sponsor. So you're telling me it's all about the money. It's all about the money. Yeah. They're, they're trying to make it so that they can maximize the sponsorship revenue by doing it in that way. Will all players contracts be honored? So the players, so here's what's interesting is they should expect 
for all contracts to be honored. We were told this by multiple sources, Mm -hmm. but this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Not that they will not be honored, but MLP is doing a free agency system. Okay. Explain it to us in 30 seconds. What is free agency? Free agency system means each team is given a budget. Okay. So say they're given, we're going to say that each team is given $1.5 million. Now your job is to go out. You're not, they're not doing a draft. Mm -hmm. So your job is to go out and spend that 1.5 million and get four players. Mm -hmm. Okay. The 1.5 million, the four players, their, whatever their actual salaries are Mm -hmm. is what they will count towards your budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for example, if say Ben John's just for reference is 500,000, $500,000, then you're like, okay, I got Ben. Mm -hmm. Right. But now I got to spend a million on three players. So that means, you know, my next three got average 333,000. Right. So what's interesting about that is some of these players that have been given inflated, we'll say inflated contracts, or maybe, maybe their contracts are a little higher than what their value is as a player. Right. That's a politically correct way of saying that. So if you've got a player that, you know, maybe she's the number 20th ranked female in the world (laughs) and somehow because she's dating somebody who happens to be okay at, at pickleball uh-huh. ends up getting a $500,000 contract. Okay. Is a team going to want to drop $500,000 of their budget on her? Gotcha. And so there's a chance that we actually might see some players go who are good players mm-hmm. go undrafted yeah. or unselected. Yeah. That's interesting. I wonder the, if the players would like that or not. Yeah. I mean, cause you're still getting paid. Yeah. It's guaranteed money. And you don't have to travel to those. You extra don't have events. to travel technically, but now it's like, okay, <laughs> you're well missing out on extra money. As and well. now you're missing out on extra money. You're yeah. missing out on spawn. I mean, your sponsors aren't going to be happy. Yeah. Right. Sponsorship opportunities. And yeah, you're essentially sitting out because you make too much money. Yeah. Which is kind of an interesting <laughs> thing. It's kind of an interesting, you know, trickle down effect of what's going to happen. Um, so yeah, I'm really curious to see how that plays out. But as we know for now, the contracts are expected to be honored. Okay. Uh, we kind of answered this as well. Who will be running the new company? What happens to Connor, Steve, Julio, Brooks, and Dundon? Um, we answered yeah. that. Yeah, so Connor's still going to stay on in some capacity. Um, obviously, we know that Steve, Julio, like they, they all, we, we, we talked about the board seats. They are hiring a CEO. Yeah. They will do a full search for a brand new CEO. To run the entire thing, guys, call me. Let me handle this. <laughs> I mean, it worked once. Let me let me take care of this. But they will do a full search for a new CEO who will run this entity. Um, what is the plan for the rest of 2023? Will there be a redraft for MLP? Are the players going to show? So 2023 <laughs> is, is going to be business as usual. This mm-hmm. is all 2024 stuff. Okay. So MLP Atlanta is still on in 10 days. So real quick, let's address. So we've heard and seen some players are boycotting um, the Atlanta MLP. What have you heard on that? So I've heard a couple of players are upset. They're upset because of the contracts. They're upset because- one Are you going to drop their names? No, they can drop their own names. Jimmy holding back? They're upset because- they signed, well, I mean, it's obvious no who it is. <laughs> they are upset because, because essentially they signed with MLP to get away from PPA. Mm-hmm. They have issues with PPA. One of these players said that they don't like, you know, they receive late payments from PPA. Mm-hmm. They have issues with Connor. They don't, you know, there's a lot of things that have happened in the past. And so they went MLP. They went MLP early. Mm-hmm. They took less money to go MLP <clears throat> under the assumption that they're getting away from PPA. And now that it's a full merger, yeah. one, they took less money. Two, PPA is back. Yeah. Three, they have issues with Connor Pardo. Let's call it what it is. Mm -hmm. And now Connor's still there. Mm -hmm. And so there are some rumors that a couple players are planning to boycott. Do you think that will actually happen? No. Because there's not enough. You can't boycott with one. There's not like a, or two or three. You need, unless they get 30, Mm -hmm. it's not enough to make an impact. Like truthfully, I know that I don't want this to sound bad. And unless the, the truth is, unless it's Ben Johns, mm-hmm. Annalie Waters, or you get literally 30 players, then I just don't think it's enough. Now, if uh, you know a certain management company that has 20 or 30 players, they all decide to sit out and make demands, then sure, that might have an impact. Mm-hmm. But as of right now, I, I can't imagine we see much of an impact. What will the format schedule look like for 2024? How many team versus tour events? So they're going to try and split it 50-50. 50 team, 50 tour. What did you say? 15? 50, 50% okay, team gotcha. events, 50% tour events. Gotcha. 
The number of actual events is still up for debate because we know that PPA wanted 40 events. Wow, that's interesting. So they're planning on doing... MLP wanted wow. essentially 20. So right now, literally this document, I'll tell you, it says they're planning between 20 and 35 events. So that's... A Total? Mo- yeah. Okay. So that's a massive spread, but... But I think also one thing from our understanding is before this all happened, so this could be wrong, uh, but the MLP team events for next year were going to look different. So you're going to do a team event at a PPA tournament. And so you would stay a day later or go a day earlier and you would play against another team. And I think that would count as a team event. Yeah. So it's not like you take a separate week out of your year to go out to an event. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah, exactly. Which that, makes- that would be crazy if that was the case. Yeah. Um, also rally scoring or side out scoring. So what they're going to do is rally scoring still for team events, yep. side out scoring for tour events. And then they're going to pull, they're going to pull the players. They're going to pull the fans. They're going to pull the sp- sponsors. And then they're going to choose a side moving forward on which one people like best. And maybe they'll keep them separate, but they're going to do like a true like test on what, on what works. <clears throat> the third, the third thing really quick on, on the events is there's no more relegation for 2024. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to relegate. Yeah. They're not going to do the whole premier league relegation thing. All teams are going to be on one even playing field for yeah. 2024. And there's going to be no more relegation. What happens to players who were signed, but do not get selected for an MLP team in 2024. So this is what's really interesting is their con their contracts will be honored. Mm-hmm. They're still going to honor the deals, but they're just going to sit out. And it's kind of wild. And so some teams, they're actually going to allow certain teams. Salary cap um, is going to matter. Mm-hmm. But but they're going to allow you if you want to sign extra players. So if you want to sign five or six players and then develop them and have a farm system and do things like that, they're going to allow that. They're trying to run this like a true sports franchise mm-hmm. or a true sports league. So they're going to do farm systems. They're going to do training centers. They're going to do... You know, they're going to have a salary cap. They're going to do all of these things. So it, it is very possible that a team could end up with five or six players. Mm-hmm. And then two of those players are essentially alternates, mm-hmm. you know, that train and that work out with the team and that do all these things. And then, you know, they're called up for certain events or, you know, or injuries or whatever. Um, but the rest of those players will essentially just play tour events. Mm-hmm. And then... Which isn't bad because they can still work on their game and they can work on. And here's the other thing that I was actually just told. I just looked at my phone. I got a text. The plan is still for APP legacy players Mm -hmm. to still be able to play APP events. Okay. So there's a certain number of legacy players. So like like the Susanna bars, Megan fudge, you know, you guys know who those are. Ryler to heart. Those guys will still be allowed to play, play APP events. Yeah. Um, without any penalty. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Which will also act as a farm system. So this next question is what I had a big question on in the past. It said, how will MLT, MLP teams operate moving forward? And they say, the free ride is over. All teams will adhere to certain standards when it comes to supporting their players, securing sponsors, social media promotion, and the like. Yeah. So, so this all, is, these, all these teams, they got to pony up. So this is what's crazy is, is they're saying, look, we are a professional sports franchise. Yeah. You didn't invest in this team mm-hmm. and then push it to the side and you get to go yeah. focus on everything else. You inv- and you didn't just buy a team and then you walk away and someone else runs it and someone yeah. else pays for it. Because just for example, right? Let's talk about Seattle Pioneers. Mm-hmm. You guys got nothing last year. Nothing. Like you guys didn't get, did you even get uniform? You got uniforms, but like. At the tournament. Yeah. At the tournament. Yeah. They didn't pay for anything. No. You didn't get hotels. You didn't get, like you guys got, they didn't have an Instagram page. (laughs) They do now though. Yeah, they do now. Where (laughs) like, we'll just talk about the black bears just because I, I am familiar with them. GM to the assistant. Yeah. Um, you know, Richie, well, I mean, he, he puts his teams up in nice hotels Mm -hmm. or at least Airbnbs. He does catered team dinners. Mm -hmm. They, you know, the uniforms this year are pretty sick Nike uniforms. Yeah. You know, so there's just a difference. So they're they're expecting all owners mm-hmm. to elevate their game and to step up. The only question I have is some of these owners bought in a long time ago when yeah. they were a couple 100, hundred thousand dollars. 100, 250, 000. I don't know if all of these owners they don't have the capital to pay they up to a million dollars. They, they or don't. More. And, and you know what they're gonna have to do is they're gonna have to sell a portion, sell a portion of their team. Of their team yeah. They're gonna have to go to Chinese VCs and they're gonna have to get yeah. and they're gonna have to sell forty nine percent. 
That's interesting. Like truthfully, they are, yeah. or they're going to have to find investors or have to find other things because because their their yearly operating costs on this are going to mm-hmm. be about a million dollars. I would say at guess. least minimum. Yeah. minimum. And they're going to have to. Yeah. And the other thing that they're they're expected to do is fully staff. Mm-hmm. Like you're going to have to have a full time GM. Yeah, you have to have a full time coach. You're going to have to have. You know, you probably you probably want scouts. Yeah. You know, so you're going to have to fully staff up, which is a big investment. All right. Anything else with this? Uh, amateurs. What happens to amateurs? What happens? Nothing. Same thing. Amateur. So it, this is the, the unique thing that I was told and is that amateurs actually will be able to, um, they'll still play tour events, but they'll, I, I was told that they were going to run amateur events along with MLP and they'll run amateur team events. Okay. Now the logistics of that, I talked to, I'll just say, I talked to Andrea Coop who runs the beer city open Mm -hmm. BCO BCO, which she's on my team and Uh, she's on your team. And Coop said that running a team event with like getting court time, getting court space, et cetera, is going to be like for amateurs Mm -hmm. would be an absolute nightmare. Yeah. So logistically they may have to figure that out because if you run a tour event, well, that's what I was saying is a lot of the times I think these will be attached at the end of the tournament or at the beginning. Yeah. Cause if you run a tour event, for example, two people like you lose, you go two and out, you're out of there by 10 30, the courts are open. Yeah. You run a team event and it's like an all day thing and nobody's Well, it depends if you're only playing one match, you only need one court for two hours and then you're done. Yeah. Depends on how they have it set up, how they have it set up. Exactly. So, so they're, they are going to continue with the amateurs um can i can i make my hot take all right let's hear it i wasn't listening i was it's not really a hot, it's not really a hot take but okay. i i am gonna i'm just gonna throw this out there but i bet that the cost of tournaments goes up for amateurs why because the their operating costs are going up okay it's simple economics yeah well, do you want to hear a interesting set i think you saw this too but PPA has ran 30 events or yeah. say they run 30 events. Yeah. And I believe their cost on those 30 events. It's around 16 million is what it's I. It's around 15 I, to 16 million. And MLP, MLP was around like 12 million. 12 on, events. Yeah. Or no, it was something. MLP what? was six events for 12 million. Yes. Something, yeah. something like that. So yeah. PPA is definitely way more efficient. Yeah. I mean, look, when you when you cut out the bathrooms and you cut out the water and you cut out all those things, <laughs> the snacks, it all adds up. But yes, PPA was way more efficient. And that is one of the reasons that ML, MLP's never ran an amateur tour. Yeah. MLP's never ran a tour like that. So it makes sense from that, from that side of things. The, the biggest thing for me is, is figuring out that solution for the players. Yeah. Because while I think that the players all got paid and I think that honestly, like the, the amount they got paid is more than fair. Mm-hmm. The amount they got paid relative to each other. Yeah. Life isn't fair. And I know that, but, but there are players that showed their loyalty that are essentially, you know, they got to, I mean, they got to decide, right? Obviously I don't think anybody's going to, going to quit pickleball because you're still making hundreds of thousands of dollars to hit a freaking wiffle ball with, yeah. a, with a paddle. But with that being said, there's still like a level of unfairness. Sure. And I totally get that argument. Yep. So. All right. Okay. Let's, uh, we had like 50 questions come in within 30 minutes. So we love it. Um, we're going to rattle, the, rattle these off fairly quickly. Uh, somebody said, what is the future of Jimmy's career now that he, there's no drama to talk about? What? There's always drama. I create drama. How long before the establishment of a player union? So I, I think it needs to happen. Like I'll be It really, needs to happen, but I feel like it's on the very back burner so, at the moment. Yeah, I mean, so I talked to a player. She's she's a veteran of the sport. She's one of I would say that she's definitely one of the OGs. Um you know, I I mean, you've had a lot of mixed partners, but she was one of your mixed partners. Okay. And one thing that she mentioned was Who that could it be? One thing she mentioned was that you that it's got to take somebody from outside of the sport. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. To come in and do it because nobody inside the sport wants to do it for fear of backlash. And I yeah. was hoping that honestly, if you really want the truth, I think the person for that is already in the sport. Mm-hmm. And that's Sam Flaxman. <laughs> he's blacklisted. Well, listen, he's probably <laughs> blacklisted after this, but Sam Flaxman has a good enough relationship with the players. Uh huh. Right? He knows the game. Well, inside. he kind of has a union over there at Top Notch. I mean, well, he's he has got his 20, own. Yeah. yeah. His, but he knows the players inside yeah. and out. Right. Yeah. He he's a smart dude. He knows the PPA tour. 
I think that's the guy that could come in and be the and freaking help form a players union. Uh, and then and then I also think that one thing that the players I'm just saying like I'm just going to throw this out there and the players union should mm-hmm. fight for a board seat for the players. Yeah. And you know who should represent the players? Uh, who? Matt Wright. Okay. I'd put Matt Wright on the board to represent the he's players. He's fair. I think he's fair. I think he's educated. I think he's a smart dude. Yeah. Just saying, those are my thoughts, obviously. What's to stop Kuhn from defecting again? He can't. I mean, he he has no no power now. They took away his power. They well, if anyone has money, they have power. Well, that's Get true. Get the Saudis out here. Well, that's true. But he they took away that power. There's no there's nowhere for Kuhn to go at this point. I mean, could you know you flip some of these board seats and these guys get all crazy and do sure but at the end of the day like everybody's burning money right now and so they've got to figure out a way to work together tyler there's 41 million dollars in salaries that have to be paid yeah 41 million i bet the ppa last year paid out under 5 million i bet it was more than that but i mean yeah it was five to ten yeah Oh, last year. Last year. Yeah, maybe you're right. This year, it's probably more than that. Yeah, Yeah. last year. Yeah. I mean, and we're at 41 million. That's, I mean, that's wild. Who do you think, or who do you feel is the most surprised or upset about the merger? I would say the players that signed early with Top Notch and with, and the players that signed early with MLP. Okay. I think those ones, because there's some players that we know who are top five, top 10 players in the world. Mm Mm-hmm. That literally got a third of what some of these other players that held out got. Yeah. Um, and some some have been very vocal. About and they've it. been very vocal. Yeah. And they're going to continue to be vocal. And now that this is officially out, yeah. they're going to be even more vocal. And I'll be honest with you, if something doesn't happen by probably January, December, uh-huh. that's when you might see like the boycott and the mutiny. Not a- as in with those early contracts being well, yeah, because uh, right now it's still this. We're all working under the 2023 umbrella, and so all these contracts are still 2023 deals, right? This doesn't start till 2024, yeah. And so you still have three months in the in the year left, and so like the, like MLP Atlanta, everyone's like, oh, we're not going to play, but you're still under contract for 2023 to play MLP Atlanta, yeah. It has nothing to do with this new deal. Nobody's, unless you randomly get injured. Yeah, unless you get injured or you signed under duress or all these weird things that people have come yeah. up with. Is Vibe now just an apparel company? <laughs> so I was told that that's pretty funny. I was told that Vibe's going to stay in some capacity because you can't kill it twice. You can't kill it. It's a cockroach. I, I talked to them. I said, you can't kill it. I, I think that they will do... My idea for Vibe was have it be like the minor league. Uh-huh. Where all these players that don't make it, you can't change minor league though. You have to keep the name. Will Jimmy be chewing gum on this pod? No, I I learned my lesson. I'm sorry, I learned my lesson. Okay, I'm really. I apologize. You guys are mean, all of you. Okay, um, yeah, we wanted to keep it short. Anything else you'd like to add? No, I think that's it. Hopefully, this like gives you just a little bit of an explanation of what happened. If you have questions, reach out. We'll try to answer them. But I mean, my overall assessment on this is I think that this is good for the sport. Mm -hmm. It's good to get all the players under one roof. Um, I'm a little bit surprised by it Mm -hmm. because my personal opinion was that MLP had the upper hand and I'm not sure they needed to do this, but they didn't have, it sounds like from some people are saying, well, they did have the money because the money is coming from MLP owners. To an extent. Yes. To an extent. I don't know. I think it's very interesting. And I think that at one point PPA felt like maybe, they were losing the war or maybe losing the battle and then they ended up winning the war. So Tom Dundon <laughs> props to him. That dude is, yeah. that dude is a master negotiator. Yeah. Clearly. And yeah, I mean, like I said, I think that everybody wins in this. The players still make a way more money than they would have, but there's definitely a, a right for some of these players to be upset. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that, that I'll be really straight up. The other thing that a lot of players are upset with is that Connor Pardo still has a role. Because a lot of, I mean, by saying a lot, that's probably a loose term, but there's players that signed with MLP and he was one of the reasons Mm -hmm. and they've been very outspoken about it. So that, that'll be interesting too, moving forward. Yeah. I like Connor. I think he's done a good job. Well, yeah. I mean, you, yeah, you signed PPA. (laughs) Clearly it didn't bother you. Okay. Uh, Make sure to like, subscribe, follow along. Yes, go subscribe. Subscribe. 
yeah, if any other breaking news comes out, we'll try to sit down and put this out as quick as we can. And as yeah. always, if you guys ever have any questions, feel free to write in, mostly write into Jimmy. He loves to respond to those. How many messages have you got in the past few days? Dude, the Tyson McGuffin that the day that that happened, uh-huh. I got 148 DMs. Yeah. Yeah. 148. Yeah. None of them were Russian bots. <laughs> Wild, huh? Alrighty. Thanks, guys.